Hi, welcome back to The Art of Frosting. I'm Liz Larson, back with some cake decorating basics. And today I have something really fun for you. This mermaid cake, it's totally 3D. And it looks hard, but actually it's amazingly simple. And I can't wait to get started and show you guys how to do this. Let's go. Just cut a little tip off the end and start to fill your molds. As you fill, your different colors will come out. Now another thing you can do is come in here and actually swirl those colors around. Okay, so I've actually mixed together a little bit of my blue and my green. As you can see, we want to get our mixed color, the blue and the green together on here enough that we can spread it around. We've got to work quickly because it will cool quickly. I want to get it pretty thin here. Come back in with your spatula and follow your line around with a lighter color or the same. I've got a little lighter blue. Give the tail a little definition. This will also give it some support. As you're working, your candy melts start to dry. Your thin one will. That's good. Go ahead and cut it off where you want to cut off. And as it's starting to cool, you want to make sure it's not running. Go ahead and put your, there we go, put your cardboard under to give support so that it will dry with the fin shape that we want. The next step is I want to make some waves. So I want to come in, give them a base, drop my line all the way up and around, and come back down. So I've actually warmed up my chocolate just a little more. I want a little more smooth. This time I'm not going to let it cool. I'm going to put my white right in. And use my skewer trick to blend. So you can see there's lots of ways to do this here. So we want to go ahead and cut and remember we need to cut down two layers. See how nice and easy that came out? And what I want to do is kind of sculpt around her so that I can get some height in the back. So what I'm going to do is actually see where her hands are. I want her hands to be just like that, like she's supporting herself on the rock. So what I'm going to do is cut away a section here, another section maybe a little bit closer to her, and uh, not so deep in. So I've mixed up my uh, rock color in advance here. Crumb ice on there just to hold everything down and to fill in the cracks is fine. So I've got my quick icer here, and I'm going to go ahead and start going around. And then hopefully, really all I'll have to do is come in just a little bit and put on some of those harder edges. I'm going to come in with my spatula. Now normally you would see me use a bench knife here, but I don't want that super smooth. I'm actually going to move back and forth. Be careful here not to be lifting your spatula up and down. You may pull your icing off, but see I'm kind of getting that rough, rocky look, and that's exactly what I want. What I want to do is put a border. I filled this with my teal, green, and blue, and some white, very pale. And I'm going to create a reverse shell with a big C here as a wave on the bottom. Next, it's important that we position our doll. We want to get her hands back first. Get her tipped. I want her tipped forward just a little bit. Now, I am not putting saran wrap on her legs. I know many of you are going to complain about that, but this is a clean doll fresh out of the box. She's plastic and saran wrap is also plastic. That's just about where I want her. I'm sorry, I just realized you can't see her. We want to start just behind her hips, come out, and down the front. Back down. See how I'm getting lots of colors in there? Want to come back in 
right just below her waist. I'm gonna come give her some knees. And down. I'm gonna start at the top with my lightest pressure and squeeze down to heavy pressure towards the middle. And I'm gonna do that for all five points and put a number four rider back on. And I'm gonna come in and give him my little starfish here some dots for some more texture. There we go, got a nice starfish. Now we get to move on to the really fun part. I've peeled off our shapes, our waves that we shaped earlier. They look great. I've got lots of different sizes and I'm going to go ahead and start to position those in behind her. We want it to look like the waves have just come right up the back of her. You can bring them in in front of her arm here. I love, love, love the way those turned out. Just stick them right down in your cake. It's giving us a super 3D effect. Looks good from the back as well as the front. And now we can just have some fun and start putting her shells on. Now I have not forgotten her tail. I just want to add it last. Now I'm going to hold back a couple and show you how we're going to peel off this tail. Now I've made two. And there we go, look how perfect that is. Backside is pretty as well. And we're just gonna tuck it right in. See how my marshmallows have come up handy because they are supporting that ever so slightly. guys enjoyed learning how to make this adorable little mermaid cake. I sure had fun showing you. I just have to show you this tail one more time. Look, I can put my hand completely behind it. Totally 3D. Anyway, don't forget you guys can subscribe. It's always free. You can find me at The Art of Frosting at Facebook where I share a lot of your work, a lot of my work, some of the things that we're not making videos, a lot of Leah's work. I do the same at www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com. If you send me your work, I'll share it there as well. So there's lots more to come. We'll see you all again soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, share. It helps me a lot. See you again soon. Bye.